I don't know if you remember, the, if you heard about the marshmallow experiment done by Stanford University years ago. They took 400 four-year-olds and they brought them into a room uh, one by one where they had some toys and books and a little table, a little chair. And they sat down and they told the little four-year-old, I'm going to give you a marshmallow. It's yours. You can eat it right away. But if you wait 20 minutes, in 20 minutes, I will be back. And if you have waited and have not eaten the marshmallow, I'll give you a second marshmallow. Or you can just eat the one marshmallow you have. A third of the kids ate the marshmallow immediately. Another third of them waited, procrastinated, and eventually ate it anyway. And only a third of the kids waited the full 20 minutes and received the second marshmallow. What's more, most interesting about this study is that uh, the researchers followed these kids throughout their lifetime and found out that the third who waited, they were more successful in every area of life because they, have a found, they had a foundation of self-control. And in, in this, these next few weeks, we're gonna teach you some of those principles. How to say new words like no. Every person who is in a financial situation, that's been my case too, you were there because of your own, your own fault. It's not your spouse's fault. Maybe it is. We'll get to that later on. It's not your parents' fault. It's not your children's fault. It's not your friend's fault. It's your own fault. You're the only one who got yourself into that mess. You're the only one who can get out of that mess. There's no politician, no government, no job, no quick fix that is going to get you out of that because it's high risk. It's going to take small steps, learning discipline over a period of time, and it's just like anything in life, right, honey? In health, in your relationships, in building a business, in your spiritual walk, it's going to be small steps. In the step number one is realizing that you need to change your ways. Step number two, to identify the obstacles that you have in order to get there. And uh, many of you are in denial. Last week, I was in denial. I thought I could do that investment, but it would have represented a risk that I didn't, I don't have the flexibility for those $10,000 right now. So guess what? Even though that investment still could have been good, not only in the money, but on the time that I was going to have to invest into it, I was, I didn't have enough bandwidth to do it. So I have to be realistically, realistic with myself. Uh, and Dave Ramsey says that when you're fat, you can look at a mirror to cover your shirt, no matter how much you stick out your chest, you suck in your gut, you still look fat. So you're gonna to have to realize where you need to trim out the fat. And he talks about an example from this couple that um, um, they well, thought they were- I also like what he says, you can hide it from other people, but you can't hide it from yourself. You can suck in your gut and take a good angle on Instagram, but <laughs> you see yourself, you know, you know what's there. This couple had always had their stomach, held their stomachs in when standing in front of the mirror. The night after they laid her off, she lost her job, was the first night they looked in the financial, financial mirror and saw fat people. The site wasn't pretty. Big house payments, fat car payments, large student loans, bloated credit cards, anorexic savings, and no budget. And now, you're going to have friends and family that are going to be enablers. They're going to participate with you and tell you they're fine because it's normal to be broke. But remember, don't take advice from broke people. They're going to lead you to mediocrity. Uh, just like Zig Ziglar has an example where he talks about how do you make frog soup? You put up the frog in lukewarm water and you turn on the heat and it heats up so gradually that the frog never realizes until it's too late. Yeah, doesn't try to jump out of the pot. Mm -hmm. The enemy of the best is not the worst. The enemy of the best is just fine. We're doing just fine. In order to change anything, you're going to have to go through some pain. But you either pay the price now or you pay the long-term price forever of never changing. You're never going to change something unless, where uh, it says right here, most people won't change until the pain of where they are exceeds the pain of change. When it comes to money, we can be like the toddler in a soil diaper. I know it smells bad, but it's warm and it's mine. <laughs> Only when the rash comes, we will cry out. So don't wait. 
for that financial heart attack to come, do it now. Maybe right now you're in a situation where you're like, man, I am in that financial uh, debt situation of a heart attack financially. It's still not too late. You're going to have to make some changes and you're going to find a position. And when that happens, remember the words of Albert Einstein who said, great spirits have often encountered violent opposition from weak minds. Uh, honey, just to finish this session, do you remember the story of the emperor with no clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us that story. Um, well, the emperor was, thought he was pretty great. He was pretty full of himself. And some ta new tailors came in town with the latest fashion. And they said, hey, this has special powers that only people that really can do their job well or are intelligent can see this cloth. And so the emperor looked at the cloth that they were going to make his suit with, and he, he couldn't see anything, <laughs> but he didn't want to admit it. And so he um, bought this expensive cloth, and they made his suit, and he put it on, but it, he was in his underwear, and he went parading out. And everyone was afraid to say what was true, that he was, like, in his underwear. That's all they saw. No one could see the emperor's new clothes until a little child called out. The emperor was in his underwear. Yeah. So be that little child right now about your own situation. In the next session, we're going to, talk, we're going to tell you how to, um, how to recognize debt myths. There are a lot of myths that tell you it's okay to get into debt personal financial debt to be able to get yourself out of the hole. We're also going to talk about money myths. We're, we're going to look at a bunch of people that long term have been able to create uh, financial freedom. And uh, I just, I can't imagine uh, what life would have been like honey, if we were to apply these principles 20 years ago and we were riddled by debt. I mean, we have gotten, we, we've missed, gotten off course at times, yeah. but we can see how much more easily it is to get back in in course, on course, eat once you apply those principles in London in your lives. Yeah, and I'm excited that we're looking at it again because I know we, like we said, you know, we see some areas where we're fat and we need to get in shape. And so, you know, you, when you go to talk about something, you got to work on yourself. And that's what we're doing right now. So um, join us, <laughs> take that. Take those first steps, you know, an object in motion stays in motion, an object at rest stays at rest. And we've been talking about this for a while and it's like hard to take those, some of the steps that we need to take to really um, take a hard look at our fat, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, but I know, you know, just taking a step, it gets you in action. So take a look, where are you spending? You know, start, start, writing it down what are you spending money on this month where is your money going start taking a look at that two practical steps number one is have uh create somehow sell something uh mm -hmm. in some way create a thousand dollars emergency fund this is going to be a quick just a thousand dollars for any critical emergencies that come up i don't care if you're in debt do something out uh do do something where you uh figure out a way to come up with a thousand dollars or 30% of your income. If your income is um, it's $500 a month, then come up with 30% of that um, to, um, to be able to just have a little peace of mind if anything super urgent would come up. And then number two, start writing that list of debts. Who do you owe money to? Credit cards, a car note, your mortgage too, uh, personal loans that you have. Uh, department stores, credit cards. I mean, people are trying to, uh, banks in every um, store now seems to be wanting to create uh, a credit card so that you can, you can uh, get more into debt. So I want you to create a list of those, of those debts that you have and we'll go through them on the next episode. All right. We're Cesar and Pam with CesarandPam.com. Grow your business without losing your soul, your family, or your health in the process. See you on the next one. And send us a question. If you have any questions, I would love to address them during the lives that we do every week. And next week, maybe next uh, Tuesday, we'll keep you posted. Talk to you soon.